This dance center, which is a miracle, and I can't believe it ever happened, is, has become just what we do every day. The, it was a radical idea when we first uh, decided to do it. It was unimaginable that a dance company that wasn't a big part of the ballet industry would have its own plant. And to us, it seemed the exact, perfect, and important most thing to do. Some place to work, some place to hang one's hat, some place to go to with your actual job every day and develop continuity, and um, you know, sort of a society. That's what it's about here. We occupy a space here in Fort Greene and we are an arts organization and there's no reason for people who can't afford to express interest uh, to be denied that. So you, know, you can't hate or love something if you've had no contact with it or no exposure to it. So that's the reason we do every sort of education and what is called outreach programs. Our programs, I think, enhance the community in, in different ways. It brings all different ages and groups here that might not normally come to a dance center. All of these classes of every kind, paid and free, uh, you know, for different groups of people, that's the whole point. This sort of education is really exposure. Our mission is kind of twofold. One is to sustain and promote and encourage Mark to produce works and the other is about being a cultural resource for the community. We started working with the New York City Housing Authority last year. It just sort of happened organically as since they're our neighbors there's all these residents living close to us. They probably don't have a lot of dance coming to them, so we thought, well, they're our neighbors, let's, let's have them come to us. And then step back with the right and follow with the left. Do it again. Kick, step, slide, step, slide, step, slide.
it's really, it's really been great and taken off. We wanted to be able to offer them dance classes here. What I get out of these classes is great joy just watching them, um, in particular the senior classes. And their energy is so great and they're so supportive of me, it's almost like I'm their son or their child. I hope to share with them um, just what they're able to do, not what they're what their inabilities are. I wanted to show them that they can still move and they can still enjoy themselves and um, that dance is fun and vital. I love, I love coming here. To me it's very soothing to my, I just love it. I love the movements. I love the positions and all that the total I am really enjoy. I, I enjoy all of it. Yeah. It's therapy for me. When I went to this center, I was in a wheelchair, and I graduated to that stroller. And then when my birthday, May 5th, comes, none of that. I'm going to try it without it. I live in Brooklyn, and I think that it's really important for our organization and company to be part of the Brooklyn community rather than just sort of this entity that's a dance company that no one knows about. I think it's very important for us to reach out and um, bring these people to us and bring these people to dance. It's vital, I think, for our survival in this community. We provide a free program in the Brooklyn Public Schools. It's our dance music literacy program. And what it is is a program where a former company member goes into the school for 10 weeks and they learn the vocabulary of modern dance and they learn how to move. And then it kind of culminates in a showing here at the Dance Center. Welcome, welcome to everyone. Thanks for coming. This is the, uh, you know, Mark Morris dance building the... the Marae, who's the dance leader for this program, she um, hosts it. They learn about this specific piece that Mark choreographed called Allegro Il Penseroso et Il Moderato. a little bit about the history of this piece. First, the words were written 400 years ago by a poet named Milton, John Milton. Only 100 years later, another artist, this time a composer, Mr. Handel, read the book and he liked it too much. He decided to write the songs that we are about to hear. Not only that, 50 years after that, another artist, this time a painter, Mr. William Blake, decided to create a series of drawings that were inspired by the songs. And finally, about 20 years ago, Mr. Mark Morris, looking at the paintings and listening to those songs, that inspired to create the dance that we are about to see. Uh, the first section. What uh, we're trying to offer to the kids is a, um, a vision that takes all of these forms of art, poetry, painting, as well as music, of course, and dance. The, the step that they're going to do in the line is a folklore step that Mr. Mark Morris studied when he was young. So, and it's normally done very, very fast. He's always explained that to us. But he took from the 
from the step and he adjusted it to this music and this uh, they're really getting the whole entire package of what is important to Mr. Mark Morris and what Mr. Mark Morris uses in order to create his works. At the very end, they all come together and perform a section that we refer to as the hunt. I think it's amazing. I think it's really great that my children have been exposed to um, diff a different cultural art form. It teaches my students that there are different art forms that they can explore and it gives them, um, I guess, different thing, different possibilities that they could, um, of options they have with their life and, and artistic mediums they can explore. Already in six or seven years into the program, we've established ourselves in Brooklyn and we have a lot of schools that are very grateful for a program that we've been offering. And so I think that as years will go by, there's going to be more and more schools that are going to take advantage of the situation and really try to use it as much as possible and hopefully share Then we can, you know, share with everybody because there's a lot of schools that we have to get to. We offer a free weekly dance class here for people with Parkinson's and their caregivers and families. It really originally started when Oli Westheimer, who's the executive director of a support group, Brooklyn Parkinson Group, came to us. It started as a monthly class and now it's grown to a weekly class and it's been a really great collaboration on, on both sides for participants, for Two of our company members teach it and one of our faculty members. Parkinson's is it makes you not move. It slows you up, your body doesn't move so well. But when I hear music now, when I'm not here, I, will, I can move. It's, it's amazing, it's really, truly a miracle. There's a huge kind of national interest now to get people with PD up and dancing. And it's grown now. We have 30, 40 participants. The first time that I realized, wow, I, I was able to stand there when other people were holding on. I was actually able to stand there, and it made me feel so great. It's really been a, a wonderful joy to have them here. The school has turned out to be far more than I imagined it would be. I thought it would be uh, more sort of uh, adult and professional classes. It turns out to be a mecca for little kids, which is fabulous. I'm very happy about that. Inward rotation and plie and lift. Inward rotation and tendu back hold. When you first walk into the building, there's just such an oasis, a peaceful oasis that's been created here in the center that you leave the New York City streets and in you come to a whole new sensory experience. And besides that, it attracts such a wide, diverse population of people that come to the center to take all sorts of classes, a huge range of subjects, all ages. I teach ages four to about 90 here at the school. 
and it's just very, very rewarding to see people coming back over and over and participating in all the different assets of the building. It's become a, a community center in an interesting way. There are kids who are taking classes here who never knew this neighborhood without this building. I think a, an important aspect of our school is that it's got a very diverse range of classes that you can take here. I take modern ballet and student dancing. I take modern ballet and tap and then I'm in the student company. My favorite class is modern because I get to make up different dances. I like making up my own rhythms and you know I like learning steps that haven't been created too long ago and the people who created it are still alive. My favorite class is probably student company because we get to learn a lot new, more new material. The group in Student Company One has been together since 2004. We practice modern dance and, you know, it's all choreography, which is really great, you know. And jumping and what? Torso on three. I've seen them kind of grow in their confidence and be able to put things together for themselves. The students that are invited into the company, it really is an invitation process. You need to show that you're very dedicated, that you're willing to learn and work well in a group and that you really have that passion, that, it, that spirit that's igniting within you during class. It's more than the, just a dance class. It's a community. Um, it's a place where they've kind of grown up together with the other kids and the staff knows them. And they're not just giving them classes. They seem to be interested in their development as a whole. I've asked the students for years to contribute parts of it that they have worked on in class studies with me. So we design, we create, we shape and we put that into a greater whole and I insert that into the choreography so that they also are contributing as well. We have our own little sections that we can add in, so that's really cool, you know, you see a little bit of us. The facility is great. Um, uh, they have wonderful spaces for them to dance in and the teachers here are just fantastic. Everybody here really cares about the students and takes time with them and cares about them personally and you know their personal growth and how um, they're how they're dancing. We love the fact that they perform uh, to live musicians. Um, that just adds a whole other level to um, their dance. Having live music in the classroom really enlivens the spirit of the class. The class can be affected by the whoever's playing, the accompanist at the time, whether it be piano or percussion or a mixture of the two. It really brings a whole new spirit, a whole new breath that joins along with the person who's teaching. And together those two elements really thrive in a creative environment. My training was always with uh, live music for the most part, and my performances are always to actual living people playing music. The insistence on living music, on music played by real people, is the minimum requirement for me. very alive, it's very exciting, and it's just a, an incredible experience for the girls to dance in the Mark Morris Dance Group in the studio where Mark creates his work. It's really quite a stunning yearly accomplishment for them.
other dance companies are so happy when we're on tour because then they get to use uh, the studios at a, you know, a very good rate, subsidized rental. The Mark Morris Dance Center has been committed to renting affordable rehearsal space to artists here in the community uh, since we opened in 2001. We serve about 300 artists a year, probably almost 700 since we opened. Generally, I'd say we have anywhere between 100 to 120 a week. Dance Center offers five uh, dance studios, each offer a sprung wooden deck, sound systems, pianos, mirrors, natural lighting, TVs and DVD VCR playback, and locker room shower facilities. I think that we are sort of learning how to teach people as they grow up. The focus is on younger kids with some adult classes, of course, and some, some more uh, advanced classes. I'm interested in people having the experience, the opportunity of the, the society of dancing, the social aspect of it, the sort of discipline aspect of it. Not everyone can afford everything, and so you certainly want to make uh, an option of people having an experience that they wouldn't otherwise. It's more than I could have imagined. It's where the culture of this company exists. Mm -hmm.